wanted to quickly show off some more advanced stuff. Um, nothing too complicated, but just like maybe, oh, I didn't think of that, kind of unintuitive things. So I'm going to pick the Glebsig, because uh, they have some of what I want to show off, or they make some of it easier anyways. And we'll just hop into a game. So, um, first things first, I like to check what's going on around me at the start. I forget what that symbol means, or does it mean? Oh, it's, a, it's in a nebula, that's what it is. Um, but as you can see, these plants all have different things. So like this plant's coming with a lot of weaponry, some industry, some self-defense. This comes with, um, or rather, some, uh, what is it, army strength? I wish these would hover. Um, actually, I could probably do it this way, can't I? Uh, it doesn't say. Um, two science, one science. These are kind of crummy starting planets, so we'll head towards Nexus. Uh, with the Gleb Signature especially, I like to beeline towards Nexus for reasons I will make more obvious in a moment. Uh, construction, ooh, well... Eh. Yeah, I'm actually not even going to expand first turn using their diplomacy, um, and you will see why. And maybe this is wrong, but uh, I want to show this off, so I'm going to kind of push a little harder than I normally would. Um, I'll take this stuff for now. I'm a little split on what's right there. Oh, also, uh, down here you can see what you're going to draw next turn. So next turn I'm going to have an Enlighten. I'm going to have a trade, and I'm going to have a culture. So that's good to know. Um, doesn't much change my turn, I suspect, but... Ah, perfect. You're what I needed. Um, so you're going to go this way. Because obviously, he could try and fight this, but like, as the Glebsick, the problem is, is when you win this fight, if you win this fight, uh, you are going to spend a ton of influence to take that over. You're really supposed to expand using diplomacy. Um, we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, and put a command on you. So let's actually talk about commands. Commands are actually really, 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 really powerful depending on what ones you get, but they also are sort of why you want to keep your fleets alive, because they do a significant amount of buffing for your fleets, and if you can keep the fleet alive and add more ships to it, then you don't have to waste the action to recommand them. Uh, there are ways to get easier commands. I don't think there's ways to get more commands that I know of, um, but in general, like if you've got a really powerful fleet, then you want to put a command on it. If you've got like a normal, you know, starting three destroyer fleet, you might not want to drop a command on it until it's stronger because you're probably going to get them killed. Uh, all right. So while we're at it, we'll go up. Oh, perfect. Wow. This is an incredibly good start for them. I'm going to screw it all up so I can demonstrate something, but um, we'll trade here. We're going to definitely culture. So with your first culture, think about a planet that you probably don't want. Because if you think about this, this is only one point well it does two things it can stop your opponents from getting uh, more support and it's one point per council so if you have like four councils this is four points which is a significant amount um so you probably want to pick somewhere you're not going to expand anytime soon which in this case would be this guy probably i'm not sure if that's right uh once again i'm going to draw espionage poli espionage diplomacy explore perfect and what's supposed to come next politics research explore let me see if that actually happens yeah, you can actually see here how it shifts over politics, research, explore. So then, uh, like, this is basically my all my future turns in order, like exactly how many things I'm going to draw. So I'm going to do three to turn, and I know all the way up to here what I'm going to do. I think we'll see. Oh, abundance actually is not safe. Cool, perfect. Um, run away. So this is the first thing I wanted to show off, which is that diplomacy is incredibly powerful in the early game. I can get any of these three planets because I can see them. I don't even have to get a fleet there. And they all have fleets above them. If you've ever um, used espionage, you can, uh, you know, install, whoops, excuse me, install Puppet Ruler, and in three turns you get the planet. But if you use diplomacy, it eats almost all of your stuff. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, let me explore. Probably, can I explore him? No. Uh, probably. And then we will espionage this one. So I'm espionaging this one because it's uh, got no fleet above it. If you have espionage one with a fleet above it, the fleet stays there. If you diplomacy them, you get them next turn, and you get their fleet. Um, yeah, I definitely want that. So what's cool about this, and it brings me to my next point, is like now I've got a, fl a system right next to Nexus on, what is this, like turn four, I think? Um, and, you know, look at, they've got, like, more traditional expansions going. And we're on Tactician. I'm pretty sure they'd be expanding faster otherwise. Uh, but 
you know, that's an incredibly powerful position. And it's especially good for the Glebsig who really want to find people to trade with. They can spread their empire out. Now, obviously, in the mid game, that can be kind of hard to support. So that's where you might start trading planets away while you consolidate in more traditional areas. But I think there's really something to be said for this sort of hyper early expand. Um, let me see if there's anything in here that can show off the other thing I wanted to do. I think this is good for them, at least when you get it early. So we will explore here, even though... Well, the way I explore, it's probably not good for them, but I don't care. Um, let's... Oh, actually, I think I can force the issue I want to show off, which is... As we know, abundance is... Oh, it's not going to let me see it, though. I'm blind. So, let me just kind of show off what I was going for here. Where's diplomacy? There you are. So, obviously, you can't take Nexus, but I could take this planet over here. I probably don't want to. It's actually not a bad planet. Because I'd rather get one of the ships from over here. So, let's go ahead and just quickly, we'll do this. We'll do that. And you will do um, rival planet. Yeah. Are you actually a rival planet? You are! Oh, cool, I can make friends now. Um, let's do this one. All the funds. Um, all right. Edict on a rival empire. Okay, once again, we can see that abundance is a problem. Uh, we will haul asteroids. And sure, I too do not want to shoot you. Uh, and we'll go over here, and now I can I can take abundance, or I can take uh, oh blah, 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 over here. And this is going to show off my second point, which is the one I really wanted to start this video about because it didn't click for me for a few days. Uh, as you know, there's weapons, or what I think it's munitions and research down here. And so my research is crummy, as are my munitions. I'm about to run out because of this free fleet I got. But we'll quickly uh, build it out because although I'm not planning on finishing this, I would like to just pretend. Um, yeah, sure, why not? And you, once again, retreat. And when we did the Explorer, we got all this vision. That's awesome. Um, so watch my, uh, guy right here. After I do this. I now have 37 out of 30. To my understanding, from what I've seen, there's no downside for going over. Research is the exact same. I can't use a research edict if I'm maxed, and obviously I can't build fleets right now. But I can still trade for them, and I can still steal them, and I can still acquire them through other means. So something to keep in mind when you're building on your planets and whatnot is, hey, do I really need to build more research? Like, yeah, I'm almost about to hit cap, but I'm planning on stealing all of my research. Well, every time you steal a tech... Uh, It'll go up no matter what, and every time you trade for a tech, it'll go up no matter what. So you can, as long as you're using trade and espionage, go as high as you want with research and never build another research building. Likewise with munitions, same thing. You can go as high as you want as long as you acquire them through other means. Now, it's dangerous to not have enough munitions because it's hard to build you know, defensive fleets and people aren't always going to want to play nice with you uh, diplomatically, but it's a really, really powerful way to... Um, Oh, and I'll talk about that one. It's a really powerful way to sort of focus your empire where you might think, you know what, I'm just going to be so focused on espionage, I don't really care much about these. Or I only care about so much fleet power. Or, you know, I can live with what my fleet power is thanks to all the techs I stole. Um, and then finally, the other thing that I've kind of realized with some time is that commands are kind of rare. Uh, they're very, very powerful. There's a lot of really good fleet roles that can do crazy, crazy things, both, like, economically and, um, what's the word, uh offensively there we go um but the big point of a command is it's now a reason to try and keep your fleet alive because this is going to cost me you know support and a card and a turn and if i can keep my fleet alive then great i don't need to uh ever issue that again i can combine more fleets into this fleet and keep the command up whereas if i you know like i can zip this guy over here combine them and now they both got the command. I've basically applied it to two fleets for free. Now, to my knowledge, there's no way to split a fleet. Do, 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 do. Offered to for trade. Uh, I'm just curious. I've never messed with this much. Oh, I see. I offered trade to everyone. That's kind of cool. Um, I haven't messed with any of that. Uh, and so it's a very, very powerful way. Oh, let's take our level up. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's fine. 
uh, it's a very powerful way to keep your fleets strong without having to wreck your action economy. And again, because command edicts tend to be kind of rare, like clearly I don't seem to have many in here. I think that's command. Yeah, that's command. I don't know why like my thing has to be a little bit lower than normal. But so I've got one command edict coming in all these next draws. So it's important to remember that like keeping these fleets alive can really boost their power because this fleet is now 15% stronger and uh, I don't want to lose it so I actually should have probably used it on this one and then combine that one because that one's more likely to die. Um, is there anything else I wanted to go over real quick? I think that's the majority of it. I'm still not great at the game uh, but this is a nice again quick tutorial on just like some of the things you might not have thought about yet. I wanted to show how you can like rush these expansions. And it's not just the Glebsick, it's anyone with diplomacy and with the proper amount of support. So there's a few factions that can do it. Uh, it's just Glebsick get more diplomacy I believe. And you are kind of giving up on your early XP to expand, but um, with the, or with her anyways, with the uh, second guy though who wants to be next to people, this is super powerful. Because um, you can get him next to like pretty much every faction almost right away and just start bathing in XP. So yeah, um, you know what, I'll show him real quickly so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, succession. This dude right here. Uh, Malgug, my favorite. Um, so yeah, that's it. I want to keep this short. Have a good one.